think maybe you get off my Lexus? Hey guys, this is Robert with Coastal GX and uh, right now I am actually hanging out at Pins, that's Padre Island National Seashore uh, in Corpus Christi. Uh, yeah, it's normally a hangout at South Padre Island, but uh, this time around I'm going to be out here and I'm taking advantage of this time to kind of give you a little rundown on what we're driving out here. Uh, we have some Lexus GX 460s and 1470. And I had already brought you a video some time back talking about why we preferred the Lexus GX460. Well, this time around, I'm gonna try to do like a little recap. I wanna talk about, you know, some of the changes that I made to Sandy. And uh, I have my friend Gabriel also here. I have my friend uh, Michael coming down and uh, in his 470. And of course, my, my buddy uh, Mark, who's always here with the uh, white GX. And we're gonna talk about what we've done uh, to modify our vehicles in the last few months and uh, so let's get with it let's start with Gabriel since he came all the way from El Paso drove 10 hours and uh, let's see what he's done to his GX this is a 2014 GX 460 and I got it in May of 2020 and that's when we started working on it and doing all the modifications to make it an overland vehicle is it a base model it's the base model and I bought it used with 73,000 miles and we've we've been enjoying it ever since why did you choose this platform i built i mountain bike so i wanted something that was able to go off road but we also like to camp and I got into the overlanding so i wanted something i like the forerunners but i wanted something with a bigger engine and something that was more powerful and that could i i'm used to a v8 engine so we and also my wife wanted something comfortable so we settled on the on the lexus we were interested in the land rover the defender but that was the price and you know a brand new vehicle to try to um, modify would be kind of hard. Well, were you surprised when you first learned about the GX460 and its capabilities? I was. And, and I, everything that I kept seeing online was about how everybody was starting to overland these vehicles because they're a very capable uh, four-wheel drive. So that was one of the main interests that I had. And then I started uh, Coastal GX. I uh, start, saw his channel, Lifestyle Overland, other channels that everybody was doing kind of the same thing. Talk to me. Uh, so you just got this in May, but already you've really, really dove into the modifications. Talk to me. What did you do and why did you do it that way? The first thing that I did, I, I swapped out the tires uh, from the stock rims and tires. We went a little bigger, a little wider uh, and stayed with the 18 inch wheels. These are fuel on Nitto, on Nitto Ridge Grapplers. That was the first thing I did. The second thing I did was a three inch uh, Old Man Emus uh, suspension lift, coils and shocks. It ended up being uh, three inches in the front, almost four in the back. That was the second thing that I did. Then we did the Prince of Roof Rack from CBI Off-Road. And then the next thing we did was the, the Iron Man 4x4 bumper, snorkel, and the Plano box, and the water port. Now, tell me, uh Obviously, uh, uh, you, you, you're, where, where do you mainly off-road? Where do you mainly travel? So I live in the southwest, so it's mainly desert, and then we have a lot of forest in the, in the New Mexico area that we also visit. So I needed something that was capable there. Uh, being that I'm at the beach right now, we find that it's a, it's a little different than where we're used to camping, but that's what I needed it to be. I needed it to be capable, and I needed it to be uh, reliable. It should go without saying but obviously people should understand or try, try to think about where is it that they're gonna be uh, overlanding and how they should modify their vehicle for that particular? Oh, definitely, it, it's where you're gonna be. For us, uh, we're not used to being in the super humid weather here, like on the beach. We're more in the desert or also the mountains, so the colder weather, it had to be capable for that. So you always have to make sure what you're gonna use it for. And that was one of the main things that when I started the vehicle, um, I, I mount bike and I like to be outdoors, so we wanted it to be perfect for just me and my wife. Some of these modifications you've done yourself, right? Like what? 
yeah so the suspension i had done at, at a tire shop where they did also did the wheels and tires but the bumper we did me and my wife did it it was very very um hard to do it took several days worth of time and it was hard you know cutting modifying everything that i had learned online for the lexus is the the allowance for the for attaching things is very tight so we had to modify a little bit um same thing with the snorkel it was it was hard it was easier than the bumper though uh, the roof rack was basically bolt on and everything else kind of fell in place talk to me about you know the money that you saved would looking back to it would you have paid a shop or you're still happy that you did it yourself i'm happy that i that i was able to do it myself but i think looking back i think we would have i would have asked had a shop do the bumper for sure the snorkel i, I would do it again myself but i think that what they, they i think that they quoted me like 500 dollars for the bumper i think it would have been worth to spend that on having somebody else do it so on the on the back part of course we're doing the trash room we don't have the wheel mount yet but that's coming what i did was i eliminated the third row took out all the seats put put in a platform that i built myself and then we also did a a slider for the cooler it gives us more storage later on we'll probably do an electric fridge that's coming but that's the main modification and then we do the the attic to keep everything organized nice of course we have we have our spare mounted on the on the roof rack with some rhino rack straps and I, like i said i had already mentioned the water port what's important about uh talk to me about this is this is something because we've we've talked about this before and even with michael and the, the, the in the community of gx owners but we always learn stuff from each other uh what are some of the things that you've learned you know recently that that you weren't aware of just the different brands of different things that they're using you know i, I also have a, a awning that i did myself uh, off of somebody else's channel where it's, it's just a painter's pull that extends and then we do the the tarp and the tent pulls but here in the in the beach that didn't work very well so i'll probably have to go with an arb iron man some kind of awning that's going to work of course i would love a bat wing the 270 but the, the price point for how much i'm going to use it makes a big difference what what do you think are going to be the the next uh, what's in the future for your truck definitely the the sliders i'm, I'm debating between southern style off-road and the one cbi has uh I like I like the look on them and the functionality to try to get more clearance and still be able to reach my roof rack. Then the last step would probably be for me would be the rear bumper, the tire carrier, uh, the gas cans, that kind of situation. You think that maybe perhaps in in uh, in what you save? I mean, it seems like the the price is reasonable on a used Lexus GX460, and the money that you're saving instead of buying a Land Cruiser or or a built you know forerunner you probably just you know can throw it back at this very capable vehicle makes sense to you oh yeah definitely I, that's one of the main issues that that i was looking at when i was wanting to build out a vehicle the forerunners are nice like i said they don't have enough power for my taste but it being something that it's more affordable because everybody takes care of them and even use they're very good vehicles so you're able to invest into the into building it out michael tell us it's been uh it's been a few months since I saw you last with this uh, beautiful GX470 of yours. What have you done to it? Well, I can tell you since we last met, actually this is the first time we met, since we last met, what I've done to improve this is I've actually finally installed my Descent aluminum front bumper. And so the reason why I chose Descent is because there's only, I think about two companies that I know of that work in aluminum, Hefty Fab and then Descent. A company out of NorCal this front bumper weighs 71 pounds installed as you see it which is amazing most front bumpers are 100 130 and I just couldn't afford the extra weight um, it's heavy truck to begin with and with all this extra stuff I can't afford more and once I put a winch in it that's another how many pounds so that was an obvious choice um, put the lights on it the lights in the center were just an experiment they're gonna go away um, I've installed well, before I'm sorry, Mike. Before we move away from the front bumper, mm -hmm. do they make these bumpers for GX 460s or just 470s? I know they make them for. I don't know if they make one for 460s yet. I think they might have something in the works. It's Descent Off Road. Um, the little logos right there in the front. Um, a guy named uh, uh, Ben Calhoun is the owner. 
Um, and I've seen them, they're expanding the shop. They're, they're doing a lot of great stuff. And the other company that makes a really sharp front bumper for a 470 is Hefty Fab out of Colorado. Nice. And they also work in aluminum. Really nice stuff um, from Chris Hefty and from Ben Calhoun. So I got it powder coated, kind of a, a little bit of a different color. I just didn't want a black one. Originally I was gonna do body color and I decided to do gray just to set it off a little bit. Um, it's meant to have uh, uh, um, rigid design front fog lights in it. And I put the Baja designs just because I had those, um, which provide so much light. Um, Did you do the work yourself? Yeah, I do everything myself. I, I very rarely, I get help. Um, we have a great GX community in San Antonio. So uh, a buddy of mine, Glenn Hugo, he helps me out huge. Uh, Greg Lari is another one that helps out quite a bit. Um, and we all kind of meet together. We have a pretty good community up there in San Antonio. Um, so we get together and we'll do different things like that. Glenn helped me out hugely with my spare tire carrier. Without him, I couldn't have got it done. Um, other than that, I think I've maybe done the lights in my roof rack. Um, all my comms were done since then. So the Wii Boost, the cell phone, it's just a, it's not an amplifier for signal, it's a receiver. I've done that since then. Um, I've also done GMRS, which is uh, just a, a mobile radio system, kind of like CB, but modern day. I've done that recently. Uh, what else have I done? The big thing, the big modification since you last saw me is the bumper and the rear tire carrier. Uh, Let's go take a look at that yes, rear sir. tire carrier. So the rear tire carrier, um, I looked around, there's not a lot of companies that make rear bumpers for GXs. We're just a small minority. Um, if we were at Tacoma, we could have them all day long, but we chose GX. Um, so at any rate, this rear tire carrier actually is meant for a Jeep. And so it's really affordable. I think I paid under $300 for the actual kit. And I think it's, uh, I'll get you the name and the link to the actual application. If you look on GXOR, also you'll see a couple of people that did this before me, and by no way the first person to ever do it. Um, but the thing I liked most about this particular, one of the characteristics, is that the tire carrier actually moves with the door. So if you open this door, it's on an eccentric, and it opens with the door. So there's none of the locking and opening. It's attached to the door, but just by a mechanical, right? So when I open this door, if you want to see the mechanism here, when I open it, it articulates with the door to come all the way open. It's still a little rudimentary. I haven't final powder coated it or anything like that, and it'll stay with it. Um, what I like about that is now I don't have to manage if this is swinging loose or forward or gonna bang into anything or over rotate and tear anything up. I still have my factory bumper cover. Um, and the only real effort this took was this piece here. Like I said, a friend of mine, Glenn, who's helped me immeasurably <laughs> to get this right. I had to figure out what the distances and the articulation was because they move at a different rate, right? Because the hinges in a different place. Um, to get that correct and also to weld uh, the actual pivot off the end of the rear enforcement for the truck. So this part right here when you get to the spindle is underneath the bumper cover and underneath the bumper cover the the actual support for the the rear of the frame that connects it together ends right around here and so we extended that out actually glenn i just bought the materials and glenn welded it up nicely for me um, a plate to land that on and then welded it around so we could get the pivot right um, it, actually, anybody can do this. You don't necessarily have to weld it. You could do it with bolts. There have been people that have done it with bolts. Um, you can search for it on GXOR. But this one, I was just, I wanted a more durable solution. And a 35 with a wheel is well over 100 pounds, probably 120 pounds. And I just thought bouncing with 120 pounds attached to my rear gate probably isn't the best idea for bolts. Let me ask you, this this mod this particular mod is it's got to be one of the most difficult ones for gx owners i know it is for gx 460 owners uh because everything is so expensive when it comes to a rear bumper or just not available yeah well is that what kind of drove you to i mean who else has this that you know of uh 
Um, I on GXOR, that's where I got the idea from. I couldn't tell you by name, but I have the links actually saved. They're, the one that inspired me, the guy had a ladder already attached to the back of his gate, and he was doing this, and I saw it and saw how he was uh, fixing it. I was like, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I'm pretty mechanically inclined. Um, you know, I can rent a welder if I can't have a, some help from a buddy to get it done. And fortunately, I just have a really good friend that's, that's so kind to be able to help me out with that. Uh, it's it's daunting at first because nobody wants to cut or drill or make a mistake in a part that's very expensive to replace uh, but you know measure twice cut once take your time be careful uh, mock it up make a template you can do this too it's not that difficult but you're right this actual Jeep tire carrier in its entirety was under $300 uh, the pattern was for a Jeep and so I just had to cut off one of these studs and eventually I'll have to make a new plate so I can put three in so this tire would be crash proof, you could say, you know, so it has no opportunity to fly off. Um, and I looked at the price of a GX rear bumper. I really like the looks of the 4x4 labs. You can even buy it in a kit, but with a kit with a swing out and everything you would want to add to it, whether it's a ladder or jerry can holders, you're looking at a minimum of $1,200. I spent under 300 now, don't get me wrong, if I paid, you know, if I didn't have the luxury of having a friend that knew how to weld that was a very professional at it, if I paid somebody to weld this, I'm sure I could get a welder off Facebook Marketplace. You know, if I know how to mock it up and he would glue it together, basically weld it, he could probably do that for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But still, I'm under $500 into this at that point, too. So what I would say is if you see people that have done this before, like myself, reach out. I mean, that's what the community is all about, is reaching out and sharing experience and sharing uh, knowledge so that everybody can improve their product, right? So I, I love it. It's one of the best things before I couldn't carry my spare or I chose not to carry my spare because it took up so much space. I couldn't put it on the roof because the roof rack uh, in the tent takes up the whole entire roof, you know, and it's heavy. Where am I going to put it? You know, I'd have to get rid of a seat or something like that. So yeah, this is this is one of the best things I think I've done since I've got the truck. Period. I agree, man. I agree. Uh, your your vehicle doesn't have a rear uh, view camera. It <laughs> it does. I actually have an aftermarket camera because I have the Tesla head unit. Okay. Um, and I haven't relocated it. So usually, what I see when I put in reverse is the backside of this tire. Oh. So I I just have to extend my wires and actually drill the hole and put it in here. Okay. The one thing I did because I was nervous about having the tire and maybe people from an angle not being able to see my taillights as well i did buy one of the jeep um rear tire brake lights you see those a lot they're really cheap you can get them for probably 12 20 bucks off of ebay and all it is is leds in a circle that fit inside of a 17 inch rim uh -huh. and so when i step on the brakes it lights up behind here so the the things that it did the cons of doing this particular thing is you have to drill holes into your rear gate. There's no avoiding that because you have to clamp this and you need some pretty decent clamping power. So that's that's a drawback. I know somebody, I can't think of the name, sorry, I'm horrible at that, um, is making a laser cut piece that fits where your license plate goes. So it's more organic. So it's less mocked up like this. Um, and I could have done better. Like there's still some grinding I have to do to get my bumper cover to fit really well. Uh, so there's some finishing touches but i mean honestly like i said i'm in this about three four hundred bucks and it's usable i've driven it all the way from south texas up to oregon to the redwoods and all the way back we just put i think six thousand miles on the truck not too long ago and i was and so i just like the idea because you know people are always astounded they're like that's a lexus and you see the wood and the leather and stuff like that and it's supposed to be a bougie vehicle and here we yeah. are cutting it up and lifting it yeah, and yeah. doing all this stuff and everybody's like oh it's such a nice vehicle why would you do that because there's not many of them out there i want to be a little different That's i just right. don't want another forerunner you know <laughs> so not nothing against forerunners i just want to be a little different and so it's a it's a wonderful vehicle you can't be concerned about gas mileage if you're going to get this vehicle. <laughs> yeah. I think coming down here to the valley, we drove two and a half hours, and my average was about 12.7 computer. So I mm -hmm. might have got a little better if I hand calculate. Might have got a little better, a little worse. 
um, but you're not going to win any mileage contests. Yeah. It only has, uh, it says 20 gallon tank, 23 if you get it to where you can see the gas, top it mm -hmm. all the way up. Um, they do make a long range tank for it that almost doubles your fuel supply, a little more than doubles your fuel supply. Uh, the, <laughs> the range on this is, I usually get about 240 miles per tank is about what I get, so it's not good. It's not good. And if you drive it in town, stop and go, 12, 11, if it's windy, 9. Yeah. So it's it's not 100% uh, on fuel. That's not gotcha. your concern. Yeah. But, I mean, the great thing is it's just a comfortable rig. You can take people around in it. You know, you can sport things like your fridge, your tent, your awning, and all that stuff. And it carries it with no problem whatsoever. So I would say it's a wonderful platform. And as the prices come down on it, on used GXs, I mean they're spiking right now just because we kept, they got instant popularity. But as soon as things mellow out, I would expect 2003s to 2005s with extra miles on them to end up being somewhere around seven to five thousand dollars, maybe uh, if they're a decent example. It's got a V8. Um, I mentioned before in our last video that a buddy of mine, John Renneman. He has almost 500,000 500, miles on his GX now, and the heads have never been off it. Just good maintenance, you know what I mean? These cast iron blocks just go and go and go. So the least thing I'd be concerned about is stay on top of your maintenance, change your oil, it'll be okay. Nice. You know, everything will be okay. Maintenance like anything else. Um, it's just a great platform. It's super comfortable, it's compact, it's not big, it doesn't have a super long wheelbase. Uh, I, there's nothing, I've got no I, no down parts besides uh, I wish I could get it in diesel, but diesel yeah. with power. Yeah. I don't want a four cylinder turbo diesel. Yeah. You could probably repower it with something else, like maybe a BMW diesel mm -hmm. might be a good choice for that, or a Cummins crate. But now you're talking about $10,000 in expense just for the equipment, and you're not talking install and modification at this point. So, you know, there's a lot of places where. Uh, Dan from GXOR told me there's a lot of places that would kill to have this V8. Yeah. So I think we probably got lucky with getting the V8 and we should just be satisfied with the power we have. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Michael, if somebody wants to, I mean, people, I'm sure they're going to be curious and we, there's no way we can possibly cover everything that you've modified on this truck. But if somebody wants to get a hold of you or has a question from you, they can reach it through the GXOR forum. Oh, absolutely, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm on GXOR. I'm on... GXOR Texas because that does the San Antonio area, San Antonio area where I'm from um, and then also I'm on Instagram at Salsa Red uh, so yeah never send me a direct message I have no problem with that whatsoever and anything I've done with a little bit of time patience and lots of copious pictures you can do it too nice. and I'd be more than happy to help anybody out if you're in my local area let's get together and help improve it I mean that's what it's all about right what model is this? What year is this? And why did you choose it? It's a 2003 Lexus GX470. Um, I've had it for about a year and I chose it because it was a very good price for me back when I got it and I couldn't resist and I've kind of always wanted a little off-roader so I took advantage of a, a nice cheap car. So you could have gone with different vehicles but I mean if somebody Anyone who's just a regular Joe out there, they see this vehicle, absolute soccer mobile. You saw something beyond that. Well, how did how did you learn about it? Well, to be unfair, I have an 80 series Land Cruiser at home, so I just that's my kind of fun car. But I've already put a little money into it, and I don't get to drive it as much. And I needed something I could daily drive, and if you know a soccer mom could take their kids to school in this thing and back, you know, and do it in the comfort of nice leather as well as something that's a platform that has a lot of capabilities. This is the 120 series, you know, overseas. The Prados have plenty of mods and support and things you can do to them and people depend on them to get them, you know, across a, a jungle or a forest or a desert. Yeah, you know, that was what was for me. I, so I couldn't say no and I, you know, I've loved it ever since. You bought this thing and what was the first thing that you uh, did to it? Uh, maintenance, a lot of maintenance. So. A lot of people like look at the GX470 as, gosh, this is going to be a great car. An old person probably had it and it's very well maintained and I have a lot of paperwork. This one was kind of the outlier. I kind of got it cheap and it was through an auction. Didn't have any paperwork behind it, but I kind of trusted it. You know, Toyota 
has that very dependable 4.7 motor and I've had that experience with some Tundras in the past. Um, and so I just had a lot of trust. And so, you know, big thing was I needed to get this thing caught back up. Um, I did a whole suspension overhaul. This, it had the rear lean, so it was sagging quite a bit. Um, all the, the suspension arms, I, I replaced the lower control arms in the front. Um, but at the same time, while catching it up uh, with factory stuff, I also did some upgrades. So I put in the lift kit, Ironman Foam Cell Pro, um, SPC upper control arms, and the tires were dry rotted. So what an opportunity to get new wheels and tires. Um, but with that, then, you know, one thing led to the other. But mainly it was the suspension stuff, getting that all lined up, kind of cleaning up the interior and stuff like that. You bought this thing, what did you want to do? What was a, what was going through your head when you got it? What was your goal? What, where do you want to go with it? I want it to be something that I could drive anywhere. Um, my Land Cruiser, I went a little stupid on. Uh, it has the engine a little higher compression, so it's dependent on like 93 octane and maybe 85 when I turbo it. This one, I wanted something I could just go to any pump, not worry about the octane, throw 87 in it and drive it anywhere. Uh, I wanted it to be capable. And, um, you know, it's still a work in progress, but so far it's gotten me out here and to the pins and I'm, I'm having a blast. So do you, would you say you do more beach stuff or like coastal stuff, or do you like to go to the forest or where do you like to go? So I'm coming in from Louisiana. I just moved here about a month and a half ago, two months ago. Over there, everybody just drove through mud pits and got mud on their car, and that was the cool thing to do. I never was into that. I went to the Toyota Jambo about two years ago. I didn't drive. I rode with a friend, but I like the trails, the technical stuff you could do out there. I mean, today I took it to the beach. I think it's something that I can go anywhere. So I want to be able to eventually, you know, kind of take it up to Colorado, take it to some uh, really nice trails. Uh, it's convenient that the beach is kind of close here in Texas and so I'd love, you know, I love taking it down here and I think it'd be a regular thing I can do. Ahmad, tell me about the exclusivity that we enjoy. I'm sure you're getting it too. Oh yeah. You know, on the way down to the beach, you know, you, you see some GXs, but you know, not a lot. And when you see them, they see you too. And you know, you throw the wave back, sometimes, you know, a little pinky out, you know, we know we're a little better than uh, some of the other cars out there. No, it's that prestige you have when you drive a Lexus, not a Toyota like I'm surrounded by. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, anything else that you've done to it so far? Oh, did you do the work yourself? Do you have a shop? Who do you, what do you do? I've done all the work myself. Um, I've always wrenched on cars since high school, so I've acquired a lot of tools and I figure, you know, instead of spending money on labor and if I have a little bit of time, I can get tools. Um, unfortunately, I had one of the, the, the worst things that could happen to is the AC evaporator was leaking. So I didn't have AC in the middle of summer. Oof. Took the dash out, you know, kind of had everything organized, took lots, lots of pictures and replaced it myself. I put the suspension on myself. The only thing I didn't do is the body mount chop for the tires. Um, I have somebody that does the welding for me and stuff like that. Um, I have a coastal bumper that I'm getting ready to put on. Um, probably next weekend, some metal tech rear bumper and some rock sliders. So some of that will need some welding. So, you know, it's coming together pretty quickly. Why do the mods that you have right now first? Why did you do that before anything else? And I think those were the things that were down on the car that needed to be replaced. And so it was a reason to upgrade. You know, there's some people go in different orders. Some people will, you know, take it off and put, you know, the rock sliders first or the armor. Um, you know, I think for this one, it was the need to fix it. You know, again, the, like, you know, somebody noticed the brakes earlier. Yeah, I had to replace the rotors, the calipers all around and stuff like that. So I think, you know, whenever you see an opportunity that something is broken on the car, there's some good aftermarket upgrades that are around that can make it perform better than it did from the factory. And so I took advantage of that and kind of, you know, used it to get it lifted up, get a little more ground clearance, give it a nice stance and look and, you know, uh, lifted GX, uh, I forgot to mention the snorkel, you know. Um, in Louisiana, there's some good flooding and stuff like that, so I could drive it on the street with the snorkel and stuff like that. And it's nice because it's like functional, but at the same time, people look at it and they're like, wow, that's different. Um, do you have a uh, diff uh, breathers installed yet? Not yet. So I actually have um, ARV knockoffs I got off of Amazon. Um, the kit seems pretty good. I need to put them on. But yeah, I was going to do that and connect them to the uh, trans uh, transfer case and stuff like that and get them all breathing uh, up to the firewall. Recovery points. 
Um, not yet, none. Uh, so I may be hosed if I get stuck. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got, I guess, the, whatever is factory, but even factory is kind of limited. But that's why I've got the coastal bumper, you know, going on for the next week before I start really taking it and doing some uh, more aggressive stuff. What do you want to tell anybody else that's out there hunting, I mean, uh, for a 4x4 four four, and they're undecided between, you know, different platforms? What do you say about this one so far? It's been a great platform. Um, it's unique just because you get a little more comfort with the Lexus, Lexus quality, the Lexus badge. Um, but at the same time, you have that Toyota reliability. It's honestly a car that I'm going to plan on depending on uh, for the long term future. And, uh, you know, again, it's something that holds a lot of value. It holds a lot of um, appeal. And I think, you know, it's going to kind of continue because, you know, these things are around there around here and you know you can find them on uh, you know grandma driving on a street well maintained well taken care of and that thing's gonna last you forever my name is mark you guys know me on social media as pilgrim i'm a lexus gx 460 i have a 2016 white one uh the previous interview that we did with robert discussing why we chose our uh, gx's over other light models from toyota products and some of our full-size trucks that we, you know our competitors have uh, I, you know, I, talked in, in that segment there on why I chose that GA. Now, fast forward about nine months to 10 months later, I'm out here approximately 55, 56 miles down on Padre Island National Seashore. Uh, the only big changes I've done to my vehicle since that first interview are wheels, uh, some all-terrain, and I did a muffler dude because I wanted it to sound like a VA. Look cool. But, but what I'm getting at is dur during that whole course of ownership, um, you know, all the friends around me, the, those who have inspired me to get the GX, have been up and coming in, in the uh, Lexus community, making modifications and stuff to their vehicles for their needs. And there's nothing wrong with it. They are very beautiful, capable vehicles. They're, they're, they're great people in our community that have them. And uh, I'm a little jealous of them. However, the, the trips and stuff I've been on, I haven't needed anything. You know, I still use my side steps daily. I have two small children that get in and out of the vehicle. So it fits both capabilities of outdoor adventure, what, what you guys are seeing here on YouTube, and also my home and personal life. It, it's a great adaptive vehicle for what I do. And now, I'm not saying you need to go out and spend thirty, forty thousand dollars on on parts and upgrades and stuff, whereas it certainly looks nice and serves the function. I've been able to go everywhere my Tacoma's been, been able, everywhere my forerunner has been. I haven't had any hesitation, minus a couple mullet on my skid plate <laughs> out, of, out of Boca Chica. But, you know, I've, I've, I've done the things that everybody else has done with, with more modified gear. You don't need to go out and get that if you want to come out and have fun. Hey guys, so I got a chance to talk to Gabriel, Michael, and uh, Ahmad and uh, of course my buddy Mark and uh, I left the modifications to Sandy for the very end uh, Sandy being my you know 2012 GX 460 that I did pick up uh, back in 2018 uh, with only 47,000 miles I really lucked out and a great price I'm not even gonna tell you how much I paid for it because you're probably gonna hate me but anyway uh, yeah sandy over here now has 71,000 miles and uh so yeah i drive it mainly to work and of course on my little adventures out here uh to the island and of course it's the first time over here at pins but uh <clears throat> yeah on my my end uh, at the very beginning what i did and and this is what i'm learning from people who modify their vehicles in general people modify their vehicles to whatever you know for whatever reasons they, they want but for me it's always been function it's always been kind of like safety you know I mean it goes without saying that that the vehicle you know straight out the box I mean it was mechanically sound obviously you know it's it's in great shape you know all the maintenance is done but uh, <clears throat> for me I really wanted recovery points just in case I got into trouble you know I wanted to be able to get out of a soft spot you know if i was stuck somewhere or be able to help someone else safely i'm very big on safe recoveries as you all well know by now uh the other thing that i wanted to make sure that i took care of was um the roof rack i i need space right there's only so much space i can have inside especially if i want to take my kids 
with me if I want to bring them you know space is going to be limited so I, I do need as much space as possible and the roof rack was definitely definitely something that I really wanted those were the first two things that I did uh, after that <clears throat> I pretty much you know hey you know we all got a budget you know so got to save my money and and uh, you know I was able to save up and and the next step was you know to try to get a lift so I got a lift for the vehicle I went with the Iron Man um, suspension lift two to three inch suspension lift of course as you saw in the video I have a video you want to go check it out you know my friends at truck toys Justin and his gang were the ones that hooked me up with the lift and uh, of course the tires you know discount tire there in uh, Edinburgh helped me out with my tires and uh, my method uh, wheels I have a whole video on that so I won't bore you with those details and uh, the other thing I just took care of were the rock sliders and uh, of course I have that video up for you all as well um, but anyway everything that I've been doing to the vehicle has a purpose and it's because I want to go and explore other things the number one thing for me was to go to the island that's my place of refuge that's where I'd like to go visit so of course I'm gonna make the modification according to what my needs are and I was tremendously happy with that uh, what I did learn from my visits was that I did need more clearance and so of course that's why I went with you know the bigger tires I went with that suspension lift uh, other things that I might want in the future you know might be you know to get uh, you know under armor or something like that if I want to you know you know be uh, uh, going to places in a safe way I don't want any damage to the bottom of my vehicle and I think that might be able to help out uh, other than that um, the other things that I've been taking care of uh, really have been I've been concentrating more on my uh, camping and overlanding uh, gear you know trying to make sure I get a refrigerator uh, trying to make sure that I have um, you know some sort of power system instead of using my gasoline generator I, I don't want to use a gasoline generator anymore so I got myself a Jackery 1000 but of course you know I'm kind of digressing here from the GX 460 uh, but anyway as you heard from uh, my friends GX 460 GX 470 wonderful platforms you know I know you guys see them out there and you see the the soccer moms and the businessmen or whatever you know everybody that's going to the office and going to uh, Starbucks and you know uh, with these vehicles but I gotta tell you they are so much more than that they are truly capable wonderful vehicles and I hope that you guys find the right one for you but anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, yeah you want to go check out the first part if you can get through it with that horrible audio my apologies but as you can see I did upgrade I do have these uh, road mics now and the audio is so much better now <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and uh, sharing my video if you haven't done so. Check out my merch, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.